I've never done that before. You're like the little hand in the car. (laughs) (laughs) Hello. So we are very excited to keep the conversation about love alive. You know, it's so clear to me that when springtime comes, everything starts to re you know, rebirth, bloom, grow. And why not love too? Just because Valentine's Day is behind us doesn't mean love is. And to talk about that from a man's perspective is Tom Blake. Thank you, Tom, so much for being here. I'm so excited to hear a man's perspective and also your real expertise, at least your website, says Mm -hmm. finding love after 50. Yeah, I have a good website design. You do. (laughs) And it's a great name. It's like a great book title. You Mm -hmm. know, you could give me blank pages inside if the title is really compelling. I'll write my own book. So what I love that you're doing is talking to your real life and, you know, your community, your people. So how did you get started doing this? Uh, A divorce started it. Oh. Okay. And it was a, a divorce that I didn't expect coming. It was Christmas Eve, 1993. I was up in Northern California visiting my 91-year-old mother. I didn't know if my wife down here in Dana Point was busy cleaning out the house, taking what furniture she wanted, and moving out of my life. Oh my. So I found out about it the day after Christmas, drove back, and happened to have a notepad that I kind of had in my lap carefully driving, but when something like that happens, a million thoughts go through your mind, and you just jot them down, not complete sentences. So when I got home, I put the notepad away, but divorce followed very quickly. And so I decided to start dating at age 53 and thought it was going to be easy, because I owned a deli in Dana Point, and a lot of nice women came in there. Okay. But I found out it was going to be difficult and I would go home at night and write this stuff down and after six months I had enough to do a little short story wanted to get it published ended up in the Dana Point News as a columnist talking about a man trying to date after age 50 and how it wasn't all that easy Wow, that's so interesting. <laughs> it's amazing. First of all, I'm so sorry that that happened to you. It that's was a blessing in disguise. Right. It's what it sounds like. It's what yeah. it sounds like. Yeah. And sometimes we don't see it as a blessing, but later, as things evolve in life, you start to see, wow, well, this is that, the best thing that ever that happened. That is the hindsight. That's yeah. the value of that's hindsight, right. right? The same yeah. thing happened to me at age 26. I ended up with two kids in my mom's basement going, what just happened? Yes. You know? yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. And so, but it is. And look at you now. Well, you know what? I found, I found the love of my life yeah. afterwards. So there it, it was wonderful. And yeah. I, on the other hand, have had what I call four near misses, MRS. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a run. You can quote me on that as long as I get credit. But okay. um, I'm a little, well, bit give of you a, credit. little bit of a runaway bride. And like, like you then, over 50, and just the dating scene is not... It's not really fun. Yeah, it was, it was a real shock to me because I thought it was going to be easy, but no way. And, uh, so the, you worked your way out of it, though. I love that you were essentially journaling and giving yourself mm-hmm. therapy as mm-hmm. you were going through yeah, it. That's, that's how the journaling started for me. I mean, how, how the writing career started mm-hmm. as a second writing career. Uh, didn't expect it, but I've always been kind of a, a keeper of notes and uh, here it is 24 years later and lots of books and articles and major TV appearances back east and, and stuff like that that I never, never would have expected. I saw that when I was researching you. It was very impressive. I mean, thousands of articles and, um, and contributions in addition to a very, very healthy book collection that you've written. Mm-hmm. So tell me now, tell us now, what, what do you do in terms of guiding the people who come to you because you have a newsletter mm-hmm. and people can subscribe to that for free? Yep, that comes out every Friday, mm-hmm. came out this week and uh, they can go to the website and sign up for that. Okay, and we're gonna put the website up on the screen. Okay. Um, what I do is I listen. I listen a lot because people will write me and start saying, well, what do I do to meet somebody? And I'll say, well, what do you do now to, to try to do that? 
And so I try to listen and then I'll ask a lot of questions because I want the answers to come out of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, after thousands and thousands of emails, I can often tell from the first sentence in an email that it might be a column or not because chances are I've written on that topic, although the topics always have a new twist. Nothing amazes me anymore after all these years. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Mm. Do you have some favorite stories that you could share? Well, yeah, some I can't tell. Uh, well, some, <laughs> well, even anonymously. <laughs> yeah. well, one of them, you, you, you mentioned uh, my partner Greta, that's kind of a favorite story. Mm -hmm. When I owned the deli in Dana Point, and I did own it for 25 years, one day this lady came in and ordered a fresh carrot juice because we had the big, big old carrots you put in the oh, juice. Nice. And I was between relationships. And I looked at her and she had such a beautiful inner beauty about her. She went over and sat down to wait for her fresh carrot juice. And I'd been preaching in my writing, oh, take the initiative. You know, if you see somebody you like, go ask them for coffee or something like that. And I'm going, oh, wow, she looks like she's really nice, no wedding ring. Tom, take your own advice that you've been telling the people. And I walked around the counter and I said, would you like to have dinner? And she looked up and said, that would be lovely. Three days later, and that was in 1998, we went to the claim jumper on La Paz and had our first date, found out we had an enormous number of things in common. And that's how we started so that's probably wow, my that favorite took some story. guts you know what <laughs> i need to story. i need to have you consult with my 19 year old son who feels like <laughs> texting is the way to ask girls out so well times have changed when i first started writing you know, we didn't even have the internet and so now this texting and a, a new term ghosting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is very sad yeah mm -hmm. and and a lot of the personal interaction that we have with communication face to face is by the wayside you know it's all in internet and overseas or wherever it is and back and forth and until people get together and face each other face to face mm -hmm. um, it can be just delete mm -hmm. move on delete yeah. and, and that's too bad mm -hmm. because it hurts a lot of people yeah, that's true. So what, what is your best advice for what to do when you want to get back into the game? Let's say that you're recently divorced in your 50s mm -hmm. and you want to get back into the dating scene. What would you suggest doing as a first step? Take a deep breath. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and and kind of do a little inventory on yourself. Uh, um, be sure that you're not carrying a lot of baggage. I mean, you're going to have some baggage mm -hmm. if you've gone through a divorce, you've lost somebody. But you got to kind of clear that out before you start wanting to, you know, impress mm -hmm. somebody or be with somebody. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. And then the next thing is you have to get off the couch and get out of the house. Mm -hmm. And you need to get involved in activities that you enjoy and meet new people. Mm -hmm. Women, particularly, because it's so hard for them to go out on their own and we're, we're mm -hmm. going to go to a movie by themselves or whatever. Mm -hmm. They need to make some new women friends. Mm -hmm. It's really important to have somebody you can talk to and share that with. That's a great, that's great advice. In fact, a lot of my um, women friends who are single, um, a, a lot of them just say, you know what, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. And I don't, yeah. I, I have never taken that, a, 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 you know, opinion because yeah. I feel like if you're not in the right place, like, or if you're not out there trying to make yeah. it happen, then it's going to be harder. Oh, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and it, it may happen mm -hmm. when you least expect it, we hear mm -hmm. that on, mm -hmm. but you have to almost tackle it like you would a, a job. Yeah, that's true. And, and plan it out. And then I get the questions on the, about the internet. Mm -hmm. Should I, and, and the older, older people, you know, ask, oh, the internet, no. Internet can be a very, very evil place, but it also can be a very great dating tool. Mm -hmm. So they have to educate themselves on the dangers. And, uh, you know, I recently saw in a news program, a woman got scammed out of 30 thousand mm. dollars 
from a guy she had never met. Aww. And 20,000 of it was borrowed from neighbors. Wow. The people who are going back, go into the dating world and include internet, need to be aware of all the, the, the bad things that can happen. Mm -hmm. That isn't saying it doesn't work because for a lot of people, in one of my books is uh, 50 couples, how 50 couples fall in love after 50, more than half of those couples met on the internet. Mm -hmm. But and then so, they followed it up with in person, right? Mm -hmm. they, you they can't drag that out for, you can't drag that out right. for two or three or four or five years. Oh, well, we're going to meet him sometime. Right. You need to get together after you've kind of gotten to know him, maybe do a little bit of background checking on a person, get together face to face. Now when you meet, you need to go to a public place. You need to let your friends know with whom you're meeting mm -hmm. and where you're meeting. And you need to know as much as you can about that other person mm -hmm. because you don't know. Right. And just do it for coffee or some even free. Mm -hmm. Don't go, oh, we're going to have this nice big dinner and stuff because let's say you get before you've picked up your fork, you don't want any part of the dinner. <laughs> you want to be out of there. You Been know? there, done that. Yeah, yeah. Same. <laughs> yeah. You're there Haven't and we? you're like, Five minutes into it, you're like, bye. And my favorite was when the waitress came over and said, are you sure you want to order? <laughs> <laughs> she could even She had tell. read your sign language. <laughs> oh my gosh, she was, she was taking very good care of me, so she kind of helped me ditch myself out the back door. Yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. amazing. It was bad, yeah. it was bad. But, and then, Amy, I think that people need to read stuff like my newsletter, not only my newsletter, but any, anybody's so that they get a little bit of feel what's mm -hmm. reality mm -hmm. out there. And then they venture out, but don't be afraid to ask and, and consult a, a dating expert, a relationship expert. Mm -hmm. there, we have some in my group uh, who are on my mailing list and stuff who are wonderful people who can be a great help. Mm -hmm. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm a writer, mm -hmm. I'm a newspaper columnist, I'm not a therapist. Right. I probably could be from all the stuff I <laughs> I'm hear. I'm sure well, you could but, be. But, and I don't really match people together either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've tried that and it, there's professional businesses that do that. Trying to fix up people, it's kind of a, almost a no-win situation mm -hmm. because one or the other may say, why did you fix me up with that person? Mm -hmm. Well, because I thought you guys would really get along together. Yeah. And I've just found that, so I can suggest something, mm -hmm. but I stay away from that. I don't make that a, a strong part of my thing. Well, Mine is. We're gonna let you focus on your writing <laughs> and, yeah. and being the Dear Abby of, of Finding Love yeah. Over 50. Yeah. And we're gonna put your website up on the screen oh, great. and encourage our viewers, anyone who's watching, to sign up for your newsletter, which I enjoy very much. Okay. So thank you so much, Tom Blake, for visiting with us. Oh, you're welcome. And Thanks we'll look forward to seeing you. We'll again. do it again. Absolutely, okay. we will. Thank you. You're welcome. And we'll be back.